There it is. We've been waiting for this one. And this is fun. One petaflops. Tiny, tiny little desktop computer, maybe a little bigger than this. Essentially a mini PC, but it's got some serious power. Now that the specs are out, it's not what I expected. However, the DGX station, <laughs> ho, ho, ho. This is what a PC should look like. This thing right here, that's a whole different story. This might be what changes the game for people trying to do machine learning, data science, and LLMs in their office, locally. Let's take a look at the specs of the DGX Spark, which was formerly known as NVIDIA Digits Project, and the newly announced DGX Station. Now, if you know about LLMs, running them locally, and what's required out of your hardware, or you've been watching this channel for any amount of time at this point, then you know that memory bandwidth is key. Not only memory bandwidth, but the size of the memory also. Those are very key elements to having things run quickly, and you want your LLMs to run fast, output tokens per second as quickly as possible. You know, things like uh, the 4090 and the 5090, which I got down there, these output tokens extremely fast. However, the problem with these is the lack of memory. They have plenty of memory bandwidth, very fast. The RTX 4070, which is last generation, and it's not even the highest end card. It's not even the 4080 or the 4090. And that one has a memory bandwidth of 504 gigabytes per second. The M4 Max from Apple has about that same memory bandwidth. Now the M3 Ultra has the highest memory bandwidth from Apple right now. I'm doing separate reviews on that one and a cluster of these things. But that one comes in at 819 gigabytes per second. And if we take a look at this chart again, and the newest line of RTX machines from NVIDIA, RTX 5070 is lower than that. RTX 5070 Ti is higher than that, 896. And then we go from there up to RTX 5090 at 1700 gigabytes bytes per second that's crazy really good memory bandwidth there but then the limitation is right there 32 gigabytes of memory vram which is the memory available for the gpu to do the processing if you go bigger than that with your models if your llms need to take up more space in memory than what's available you're gonna spill over to the CPU and then things just slow down drastically and become unusable. But of course, if we wanna use LLMs that are going to give us better results, generate better content, then we wanna use larger LLMs. And that's where the Mac Studio with 512 gigs of available memory really wins here. Now, if you go with the M4 Max Mac Studio or MacBook Pro, then that goes up to 128. Less memory bandwidth, but a lot more memory, still really good. So what what does digits give us or DGX Spark? Let's take a look at that. Very nice specs. We do have 128 gigabytes of that memory and it says here unified system memory, just like Apple Silicon. So that means that this is gonna be not upgradable, obviously, it's LPDDR5X, just like the Apple memory and it's going to be unified so it's available for both the CPU and the GPU. That's good, but wait a minute. Here is where things get a little bit not as great. And these machines, by the way, are $4,000, these little DGX ones from NVIDIA. Now they are providing these boards to partners to create their own little mini PCs. The only one that's available for pre-order now is this one from ASUS. It's called the ASUS Ascent GX10. Really curious about that one. It's $1,000 cheaper, but still really expensive. Three grand for that one, four grand for the DGX Spark. And then you can get a bundle also right now with a connecting cable. That cable, the connection between the machine and how you cluster them is also going to be important because that's going to be a bottleneck. And we're gonna take a look at that momentarily. But look at this memory bandwidth, 273 gigabytes per second for the Spark. That's the same memory bandwidth as the M4 Pro, not even the M4 Max from Apple. I think that's gonna be pretty usable, but it's not gonna be amazing. And $4,000, <sighs> I think they're charging that much money because it's an AI machine and it's from NVIDIA. Is it gonna run your LLMs pretty well? I think so, because of the size of that memory. Especially if you link those two machines together, two or more. They don't explain too much about how many of them you can link together at a time. We'll have to see. I did pre-order one, so we'll, we'll check it out. <laughs> Here's another less than impressive little tidbit. Tensor performance here is 1000 AI tops. And if you take a look at the RTX machines, the RTX boards, the AI tops is way higher than that. Even the RTX 5070 has higher AI tops. What about the 4090? Let's take a look at that. The 4090 
which is this one right here, also has more AI tops and almost quadruple the bandwidth of that little mini PC. Of course, with that memory limit, don't forget about that. Ah, it's like you can't have both memory size and the bandwidth. If you get more of one, you get less of the other. I think they did this because they want to differentiate this from the other thing they got coming out. 20 petaflops, 72 CPU cores, chip to chip interface, HBM memory, just in case some PCI Ex Express slots for your uh, GeForce. <laughs> this is the computer of the age of AI. And with AI changing everything, Huang said that 100% of the software engineers out there will be AI assisted. 100% of software engineers in the future, there are 30 million of them around the world, 100% of them are going to be AI assisted. Not replaced assisted. That's why even after decades as a software developer, I believe in constantly investing in your own knowledge. Enter Boot.dev, the sponsor of today's video, and hands down the smartest, most entertaining way I found to learn backend web development. I've taken courses on many platforms before, and let me tell you honestly, Boot.dev turns online learning on its head, and it makes it not boring. So you actually finish those courses that you started. Go, JavaScript, Python. Right now I'm actually taking the cryptography course and trust me, it's actually fun and it teaches you real job ready skills. All right, ready for the story? I paid tens of thousands of dollars for a computer science degree. Yeah, from a university. And I left college without actual practical skills, just mostly theory, which comes in handy, but practical skills are important. That's how you land jobs. So I had to learn the tech stacks and languages like Python on my own. With Boot.dev, you get completely free guest access to all course material. That's already pretty amazing. A paid membership unlocks interactive features like hands-on coding, AI assistance, progress tracking, and the game mechanics. Are you ready to level up your coding skills? Head over to Boot.dev and start your adventure in backend web development from start to finish. Your future self will thank you. Click the link below and use my code to get 25% off your first payment for Boot.dev. The DGX station. What is this thing? It looks like a motherboard and a CPU and a GPU all together into a desktop size machine, but this is completely different because this machine is designed to do AI and that's it. It's gonna be really freaking good at it. How much is gonna cost? We don't know yet and it's not available for pre-order yet. And OEM partners like Asus and Dell are supposed to have machines that will have this board in it. Now let's take a look at the specs of the station. This is a whole different story. First of all, you got the Blackwell Ultra GPU now. Look at that GPU memory. Up to 288 gigabytes of memory and eight terabytes per second bandwidth. Oh my goodness, that is crazy. CPU memory, also pretty good. 496 gigabytes. And look at that memory bandwidth for the CPU. 396 gigabytes per second. This machine is just geared for AI. Do you remember when I said the bottleneck is not going to be necessarily what's inside the machine, but how you connect multiple machines together to grow into a cluster. NVLink, that's the technology that allows you to link multiple GPUs together, multiple boards in this case, up to 900 gigabytes per second, which is pretty decent. But now we're showing a slowdown. It's no longer that eight terabyte value, right? Now we're down to the sub terabyte area. Uh, that's where Apple lives right now with their consumer devices. By the way, the station is more of an enterprise level device. But I don't see why people that are professionals, people that are making money doing AI stuff, I don't see why they wouldn't be able to buy one. We'll see. I don't know. And then you have something called networking bandwidth. And they created this new thing called NVIDIA Connects, which is a super NIC. From what I understood, it's going to be an optical based uh, network connection. And that's going to be way faster than your regular 10 gigabit or 25 gigabit connection. Here you got up to 800 gigabit per second, not gigabit bytes gigabit so much much smaller than nv link bandwidth but still much faster than regular ethernet connections that we typically have even the ones that we typically don't have like up to 25 gigabits this is 800 so still much faster now since the spark is costing four grand which is probably a thousand dollars more than uh, we all expected since it was announced at ces how much do you think the nvidia dgx station is going to cost I don't know, but it's probably gonna be pretty expensive. We're talking about 20 petaflops here. Yeah. Now during the keynote, he did mention something which is uh, a little different. Uh, so normally you would quantize something to uh, floating point 32, not quantized, I mean, a uh, floating point 16, your 
your LLMs, okay? I, I talk about quantization in other videos here. And you would take those models and you quantize them down so they run on smaller hardware to 8-bit or 4-bit. Well, these petaflop measurements that Jensen Huang was talking about, he said it was gonna be four, floating point four. Uh, haven't heard that one before, but it doesn't sound like it's the full 16 or 32. Not sure how that's gonna play into how performant these models are gonna be in that level of quantization, considering it's four floating point versus int four quantization, we'll see. I think you may be able to go to NVIDIA's uh, development center and play around with their models. I haven't done that yet, but uh, I may have to play around with that. If you did that and you know about how they handle floating point four, uh, please leave a comment. I'm sure people will appreciate that. Thank you very much. Then there's this thing called RTX Pro Workstation. Really interesting uh, little thing in the middle that sits between the Spark and the DGX station. He doesn't talk about that much in this uh, presentation, but it looks like it may be a bunch of pro-grade um, RTX boards all stuck into a desktop type system. And then you go into your enterprise server racks and then your Gigafactory sized 15 exaflop DGX <laughs> server racks. I'm really excited to get one of the digits machines in here and start testing it out. Really good stuff in the space, although everything is pretty expensive. Thanks for watching this video. Hope you're excited as I am about this stuff. And if you are, consider subscribing to the channel. It's free. And if you want to become a member and support the channel, there's a join button right down below too. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.